Hello, everyone. This is Martin Petella for Life Enthusiast, coming to you over the internet, radio, the galactic waves. Today, we have with us George Urena, or in his original name, Jorge Urena. That's, that's good Spanish. Okay. <laughs> uh, George comes to us uh, from Canada, but originally from Peru. I would like to highlight the fact that immigrants are a bonus for this country. <laughs> they bring with them their culture and enrich us. I'm one of those two, just that's unbiased. But anyway, today, George, I would like to speak to you about the product that we're bringing into Life Enthusiast, sure. which is maca. And I know you're the expert in this. You grew up with it. Can you tell our viewers why they should know about maca? What's so yeah. wonderful about it? All right, so let's let's begin explaining what what maca is. And uh, maca is a root that grows in Peru about uh, fourteen thousand feet altitude. That's about maybe four thousand meters over sea level. Uh, it's quite high. And uh, in this particular area where maca grows, there's uh, nothing. Barely you can find uh, any other crop uh, growing, like uh, potatoes or. Uh, 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 yucca root or maybe uh, corn. I mean, there's nothing like that at this altitude. Mm -hmm. and so uh, I would say maca learn how to grow in this harsh environment for a long time. And at the beginning, I'm talking about probably back in the 1940s, 1950s, uh, the maca root was, uh, was a wild crop. So something that was dispersed uh, growing uh, in the mountains and uh, you know it wasn't a really a farming operation as it is right now uh, just to mention about uh, the uh, the maca root uh, was it wasn't really a staple food down there it was just one of the crops that the Incas used to have like here and there it wasn't really as a staple food like uh, that the Incas or the old people or mm -hmm. Aboriginal people in the area was taking on a regular basis. Right. Uh, it's, it's not like that. It was just, you know, something that was added to. But to me, it's sort of like, it's not like a potato that you eat for energy. It's That's a right. mushroom that you eat for nutrients or for, just for flavor, sometimes. adaptogenic function, right? Correct. So uh, when we started the uh, growing operation, uh, obviously, we, we started doing some investigation, I mean, research, uh, development, and, uh, and teaching other people, and they started growing in different places in Junin. Now, Junin is the actual plateau, is a, is a region, okay, where the maca grows. And um, it just adapted so well in this area that uh, now, nowadays we have, you know, huge uh, extensions of land uh, planted with this uh, with this crop now we realize that uh, the maca comes in different uh, colors and that's something uh, very unique we have black maca purple maca or red is the same uh, we have uh, yellow maca now what's the main difference between yellow black and purple I would say yellow maca being the most common variety uh, it's just very sweet, uh, does not uh, offer too much of a, of a benefit, meaning in terms of uh, uh, energy or um, uh, hormonal balance. Uh, it is just a very dense, nutrient-dense uh, uh, root. Not bad, okay, it's good. I mean, perhaps, perhaps it will give you some energy because of the, uh, of the carbohydrates that it contains. Okay, but not so much of the benefit you, you, you would like to see on the maca or what maca is known for. Okay, now purple maca, let's talk about the purple maca. So the purple maca focuses its action in healing, soothing, repairing. Okay, uh, it will give you energy, but not the way of energy we, it's not like, uh, not like the black maca. I will talk about that one later, but uh, it's just kind of... Uh, relaxing in a way it will when you take purple maca uh, in any uh, form okay powder or liquids uh, it will just give you that sensation like a relaxing sensation so in other words this is working on your adrenals mainly and it was it, it's just uh, uh, 
causing that uh, cortisol levels to go down. Okay, so decreases that mm -hmm. uh, stress levels that you may have. Yeah, sounds to me like it's uh, relaxed power. It is, and it, it has to do with the color. I don't know why, but it has to do with the color and the combination of uh, nutrients that they're present on this uh, particular root uh, that makes it happen that way. The black maca, by the contrary, focuses its action on energy levels. And uh, there's more iron on the black maca, for example. Uh, there's more uh, zinc, okay? Like naturally occurring uh, yeah. elements that, I mean, for some reason causes just, uh, I mean, that energy boost uh, in your system. So um, in other words, the way, uh, the, the route that you choose uh, for your, um, uh, let's say your treatment or your uh, daily uh, intake on maca uh, will determine uh, how, uh, how these benefits will just uh, kick in. And I would like to show you, if you allow me, uh, I have the maca roots here with me. Yeah, that would be great. That would be very okay, interesting. So don't, don't tell anyone, but uh, I brought it in from Peru directly. <laughs> <laughs> all right so, yeah that is uh, all right thing. so i don't know if you can you guys can see it it here. looks like about like a chestnut or something like that correct now just to give you an idea okay this uh, little guy here okay the mac this is the black maca okay the normal size okay when it's uh, fresh is like this uh -huh. okay so what happened is just uh, after the maca root is harvested we, uh, we let it dry naturally uh, in the altitude with the sun. Well, sun and cold weather overnight. I would probably uh, highlight uh, the fact that the, uh, the maca root, when it's fresh, tastes like horseradish. Uh, it is not that sweet, okay, and contains a lot of water. Probably about 70 to 80% is water, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, when we have this product dry, uh, this whole thing has changed, causing uh, some uh, carbohydrates to change into a very complex carbohydrate called glucosinolates. They, they're also secondary metabolites in, in this product, okay, in the, in the actual root. And um, I don't, I'm just going to make a little noise here. It yeah. is solid like a rock. Yes. Okay. Now, the, uh, these these elements what's inside this product okay are preserved for hundreds of years i should say i probably have these uh maca roots for 10 years okay yeah. there's nothing you know in the outside and you can rehydrate this you can put it in water and then automatically it will just swallow okay and you can use it again do you think it would actually grow again or not that? No, because it grows from seed. It doesn't grow from the actual root. Yeah. All right. All right. So um, this is the actual yellow maca. Uh -huh. um, is it yeah. clear? Yeah. Very clear. Okay. So that's the uh, the actual yellow. Same and, shape, different color. Yeah. And uh, I'll show you the uh, the purple, which actually doesn't really look much as purple, but it, there's some color in there. It will probably okay. be purple on the inside, right? That's correct. Before we get into all the technicalities, yeah. tell me first, why do I care? I mean, what will maca do in my body? Why should well, I know about it? It's important, uh, yes. And actually, this was discovered, I mean, o over time. Uh, maca provides hormonal balance, energy, and well-being. That's... I mean, those are the three main uh, benefits you can get out of maca. But don't think that you're going to get hormones in the plant and something's going to be changed or no. It's, it's just going to be nutrition. So the, uh, the nutrients uh, that you will find on the maca root, uh, precisely for some reason, we don't know, works on the hypothalamus pituitary gland. Uh, and just by nutrition, by providing all these nutrients to this area, Okay, these glands will supply nutrients to the other glands, causing a, uh, a, a good benefit, yeah. putting your system back to normal in order. And, and that's the whole idea behind MACA. Many yeah, people so that's, think, yeah, so it's really a regulatory. It is. It is. And uh, many people think, oh, I mean, probably there's some hormones in the plant. There's not. It's just mainly you will find on MACA 
vitamin A, B1, B2, B3, B6, B12, C, D, and E. Uh, it contains 32 minerals. And I would say, I mean, traces of minerals. But, I mean, these traces of minerals uh, just uh, cause the effect in, in your body. Okay? So there's, um, uh, I mean, the market contains, uh, it's a high value in protein. And uh, there's uh, quite a, 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 a long range of amino acids associated with this protein on the market. So all this combination of nutrients makes it happen. Right. Well, in, in my what, world, when I talk to people, the dysregulation of the endocrine system is rampant. I mean, these yeah. days people are suffering with hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism especially. Uh -huh. and, uh, but other uh, sexual function repressed, suppressed, under whatever. Right. Uh, chronic fatigue is just all over. So many people are suffering from just not having normal level of energy, right? And it is just, I mean, we don't have enough nutrients. And, and that's the reason why maca is so good. And of course, I mean, we're not talking about the products yet, okay? But our products have a, uh, a very uh, uh, intense uh, effect in your system because of the concentrations we have. We'll talk about that later. Okay, okay. so in the product that we have, we call it the XP, and we have yes. it listed in three versions, the 18 to 1, 20 to 1, and 25 to 1. Correct. Is, that, is uh, the 25 to 1 most of the black? Well, uh, the, uh, the, the Maca Pro XP Professional 20 to 1 uh, it's uh, it's a product made 100% with 100% uh, purple maca root. The 18 to 1 maca pro XP platinum uh, is made with uh, pure black maca, okay. And the limitless, which is the 25 to 1, the maca pro XP limitless, uh, is made with a 50/50, so 50% black and 50% purple. Now. To manufacture the uh, the liquid macas, okay, uh, and to give uh, uh, you, I mean, the customers this uh, nice energy, uh, hormonal balance uh, feeling, um, it must go through a uh, special process. <clears throat> the liquid maca, okay, begins with uh, with a combination of uh, you know of roots. So if we are working on the professional, uh, that means the actual purple maca, we'll use that. If it's the black, we'll use the black or, you know. Normally, uh, every extract that you find in the market, okay, and there's many, okay, uh, they're alcohol-based and uh, these products are made from the actual powder. So it, this is a product that is already uh, manufactured, okay, processed. And what they do is just they soak the powder with alcohol and they create an extract. So it's, it's an alcohol-based extract. Okay, no, that's that's okay, and that's that's a normal uh, procedure. That's the standard uh, maca tincture, as I would understand it. Correct. You know, this is what we do with our products. Okay, so we take the maca roots. Okay, all the uh, the uh, the roots that we have in here, we separate them by color, and we soak them in water after washing, and of course, I mean, clean the actual root. Okay, we soak them in water until uh, we we cause a fermentation. We induce to a fermentation, okay? So basically what we have is a controlled fermentation process at the beginning. Uh, once the maca ferments, it opens up new chemicals, new uh, biochemicals if you want. And uh, then we add the alcohol, okay? Just to balance the pH, okay? And cut the fermentation to a point. And, uh, we once we reach what we need okay we leave the maca roots resting for about six to eight months month. so month yes so imagine the quantity of maca roots we have you know resting uh, this process is called maceration i don't know if you're familiar with it okay after the process we uh we take the uh, the liquid with the macas and we put it through a uh, hydraulic pressing. So we extract everything. We juice the maca roots until nothing comes out of it. And once uh, we obtain this liquid, basically the, uh, the carcass, the, uh, the maca root, the remaining, okay, is just uh, sent to uh, University of La Molina in Peru, okay, to feed animals. 
okay? Right. And the uh, actual liquid goes through a process of evaporation. So we put uh, evaporators, okay, very low temperature to evaporate the alcohol. So you're getting rid of the alcohol before you bottle it? Up to a point. So you will find there's about 2%, okay, by um, volume, okay, on the product. I, I should ask here, is, is it grain alcohol you use? Uh, no, not grain alcohol. We don't have that. Uh, we use cane sugar. Sugar cane, okay. Yeah. Okay, great. Because so some people who are sensitive to wheat or to... Yeah, no, no, no. no. We don't have that much in, uh, in Peru. <laughs> they'll, be, they'll be safe with this, right? Yeah, well, because uh, Peru is not a uh, wheat producer. Good. I mean, you could be buying the alcohol from somewhere else, but you're using local. Yeah. It's local, yeah, for yeah. sure. Yes. And organic as well. And uh, this is probably something that I should uh, mention here. Uh, many people ask how the liquid mac has compared to powder. Okay. You can't. Really, you can't make uh, a comparison. You could probably make a comparison based on the effects, the benefits, but not on, uh, let's say, how many capsules are equivalent to um, so much of a liquid. You can't do that. Why? Because there's two different processes. One is the actual maca root, as it is, okay? Right. I mean, basically, this is just... Uh, uh, ground it up and then you know goes through a gelatinization process yeah you mentioned this word gelatinized so yes. that's, that's well, a process of preparing it or cooking it somehow right it, it is okay gelatinization is a process that removes the starches out of the root making it a, the product making the product more digestible and uh, absorbable now uh we have a raw gelatinized product okay why because we have a cold gelatinization process. If you want to obtain uh, starch out of a potato, how, how would you uh, extract it or take it out? I'm going to tell you how we do it. And this is just ancient knowledge. Okay. So you take the potato. Okay. You uh, uh, break it in pieces. Okay? Shred it. Shred it. Yes. Cover it up with water. Okay, and let it rest until the water, you know, evaporates. And at the bottom of your, uh, let's say, uh, bowl or pyrex, uh, you will get the actual, by precipitation, you will get the starches out. Yeah. Okay, so that's, what, that's how we do it. Okay, we have obviously a machine that we created for this uh, purpose. And we are not using heat. That's how we call it raw, the raw gelatinized process in our case is just a cold dry uh, uh, remotion of the starches okay without without the use of heat uh, we we also have another product called the maca pro xp gold and that was my first product in canada that was launched back in 2004 and that was just a 10 to 1 but at that time that product caused a uh incredible reaction in the public because they nobody had tried something like that before you take a teaspoon of a 10 to 1 and they wow i mean i feel so good okay now that was a 10 to 1 then i i uh launched uh the 18 to 1 then the 20 and then the last one was the 25 to 1 which is the limitless uh and what do these numbers actually mean concentration uh, that's actually a good question uh it means how much maca we use per liter so that means 18 to 1 is 18 kilograms of maca roots used for one liter. And the liquids uh, are probably our best, uh, um, you know, flagship uh, products because they're so uh, impressive uh, in, you know, when you take it, you get the, the benefits right away. It's just maybe a couple of minutes and you feel like, well, like a different person. These products are very unique. And uh, they're very potent. And there's, there's a way of taking these products. It's just by the teaspoon, okay? And one teaspoon per day, uh, as I always say to my customers, will uh, keep you running like Speedy Gonzalez, okay? <laughs> it's very, very potent. And, of course, it depends on the, uh, on the uh, product you take uh, to get certain different benefits. So, for instance, if you allow me, uh, we recommend Black Maca, uh, to people that they're on uh, sports, you know, they're doing marathons or uh, they're w working out, uh, you know, um, weightlifting. 
uh, people who needs that extra energy, okay, that's the black market, 100%. Okay. Endurance okay. and performance. Yes, exactly. Vigor, stamina, okay, that's what you're gonna get. Uh, purple maca, I would probably suggest uh, for uh, relaxing, for uh, soothing. Now, the energy will come regardless, okay? It's just the way it works in your system. Yeah. It's, it's different. It's, it goes gradually, like from, you know, okay, yeah. going from the down to, uh, to a maximum uh, energy uh, level. Uh, but uh, it's not going to give you that blast of energy, okay, like the black maca. So let me uh, give you a little uh, comparison here. Okay, it's like when you go to a, um, let's say, Starbucks, okay, coffee shop, okay? Uh, some people will ask for double espresso, right? Yep. Okay, the, the Black Maca will give you that kind of sensation, okay? More or less, just I'm doing a comparison. And uh, if you take a uh, cappuccino or a latte, okay, will give you the purple Maca, uh, yep. uh, uh, yeah. I, to it's give an idea on the energy, yeah. how it's, how it's going to work on you, right? I get it. It's a lift, but it's not so intense. That is correct. And so normally, uh, women prefer purple maca. And normally in the market, men prefer the black maca. Now, that is not necessarily uh, for men or for women, okay? Because like if, you, if you're under a lot of stress, okay, you're a man, Okay, you need to relax. So you will, I will recommend you to take the purple maca. So you have to think on those uh, little aspects uh, on the product. Yeah. Talk, talk to me a bit about what's going on in the maca market. Like I have been hearing how the Chinese traders came to Peru, maybe, I don't know what, seven, 10 years well, ago and started buying up the whole supply. I remember a few years ago, there was a huge jump in price. In price, oh yeah. Uh, maca. Well, uh, I'm going to tell you what happened. It's, uh, I mean, the story goes far beyond the, uh, the Chinese uh, market. I was actually in Beijing when this happened. Okay. I was part of a, a Peruvian um, a trade mission in, uh, in China. So we realized when we were there that the Chinese people were growing maca, okay, from seeds that they took from Peru. Mm -hmm. And they had, I mean, more... Uh, uh, more land sown with maca than us. So it was incredible. But, uh, and I'm going to show you uh, what happened, okay? The maca root that these guys got, okay? There. Is this, it? this is the Chinese maca? That's the Chinese maca, okay? Is it, is it clear there? Yes? You yeah, can see? Oh, yeah, that's clear. Okay, compared to this. Yes. Okay. So what happened here? Do they grow it in a different climate? Well, yes, to begin with, okay, it's a more humid uh, area. Uh, they, they grow these in uh, the Yunnan uh, province, which is, I mean, there's, they have some mountains in there as well, but I mean, the, uh, the habitat is not the same. I mean, we dry the maca roots up in the altitude, okay? So sun, intense sunlight during the day and uh, freezing temperatures overnight, okay? Yes. Well, in China, they just didn't have that cold weather. I mean, they're, they're dry. Subtropi cold they're weather. subtropical. It's much warmer there, right? So they started drying the maca in an oven. Oh, they actually increased the heat. If you dry the maca root, okay, in an oven, what you're going to do is just you're going to well, basically evaporate most of the, uh, the components. But at the same time, uh, the uh, carbohydrates that they're uh, in the roots, okay, will caramelize. What happened is just the uh, Chinese didn't get what they wanted. So immediately they react, okay, because they couldn't use their product. Uh, there was no benefits whatsoever, nothing. Okay, so that, uh, It was no better than growing peas, right? Correct, yes. <laughs> so they went to Peru and they tried to purchase everything they, they could. Okay. Now, at that time, I remember, okay, um, there was like a gray area uh, as to uh, this operation being legal or not. Yeah, so the yeah. Chinese went with cash, okay, 
forget about uh, you know uh, yeah, banking normal operations. They just had an, uh, a, a, a backpack full of currency. Yeah? It, yeah, and they pay off the farmers. Uh, even they pay two hundred dollars a kilo for the raw maca. Uh, obviously, for the black maca. Okay, so for this little guy here, they were paying two hundred dollars a kilo, unprocessed. Right. Okay. What, now, what did the price used to be before that? Probably was like uh, ten dollars a kilo. So like ten to twenty like times, raw. ten to twenty yeah. times the price. Inflation so, crazy. Yes, and this was huge for the farmers, and then the government thought it, it was oh, this is good for them because they're increasing their wealth. Well, that that wasn't really the uh, I mean the true. Uh, it was it wasn't true because it was just mere speculation. Yes. Okay? And why? Because I mean, then after a year, I was in Hong Kong and I went to a dispensary, kind of a Chinese uh, pharmacy, and they have all these different roots in there, right? Uh, and I found the maca root. You know how much they were selling the maca root for? 3,000 US dollars. A kilo. A kilo. So yeah. the 200 was nothing. Okay. Yes, okay. So that was a 15 times markup. Yeah, not bad. Correct. But the problem is, uh, okay, that uh, exhausted all these stocks. And that's the reason why the price went up. I mean, so high in Peru. All right. So then, okay, because of this uh, Chinese effect, many people in Peru thought, oh, let's, I mean, the Chinese are going to come back next year. Let's grow some more maca everywhere in Peru. So they started growing maca in places that maca never grew before. Okay. So in the south, in the north, in the east, more towards the Amazon. Okay. And wrong soil, wrong altitude. Wrong. It was like growing it in China again, right? What happened? The maca mutated. Okay. It just uh, it just didn't grow, and we we have the the same effect that the Chinese people had with the maca in uh, in Peru. It was more like a carrot, okay, kind of, but it wasn't really that big. So then, uh, what happened is, people in Peru were losing money, growing maca everywhere else except Junin. So they started um, putting some uh, plant hormones. Oh. And they got the uh, Franken maca. Okay. So <laughs> now right? you're showing me something that looks more like a potato. What happened is just these products that were coming out of Peru, they, they weren't good either. It yes. was just like working with uh, Chinese maca. Uh, also, the Chinese maca, because they were not selling their products, they, they basically put the price so low, okay, that some companies in Peru were buying maca in China, repacking it, and then shipping it out as uh, maca from Peru. <laughs> okay? So they were, we had a, a, a lot of uh, problems uh, with quality. And you're probably aware, I don't know, um, I mean, how many maca products have you tested in the market? But just looking at the powders, you 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 will realize there's many maca uh, powders that they're very sweet. I don't know if you ever tasted. Yes, okay. I have. Uh, they even uh, call black maca, and the product is very light, pale, yellowish, kind of. Mm. Uh, and if you take the maca powder, I mean of these uh, manufacturers, you will not get any benefit. So many people thought, oh, maca is no longer good. I mean, it, it just destroyed their image. Uh, now, uh, something that I can tell you is uh, our company, uh, Yutko, we, we have the only maca research center in Peru. It's the only one in the world, okay? And in Peru, obviously. And uh, uh, it's, it is a state-of-the-art uh, facility uh, where we store our maca roots, okay? Uh, but also we have uh, a uh, training uh, facility and a lab, okay, for uh, people who are doing research on, on maca environment. And we are giving this for free, okay? So we have our own hotel, for our visitors, if they want, uh, like, uh, if you ever want to go to Peru and visit these uh, maca fields, 
Uh, I remember I, I, I took uh, a, a couple of customers uh, from um, St. Catharines, one of them, uh, and the other one was from uh, Toronto, I guess, uh, to Peru. And we went to the maca fields and it was like, oh my God, this is so, it's, it is, first of all, it's beautiful, okay? It's, the air is just so clean. It's really nice. And um, maca grows there. Okay, and uh, well now, uh, before we didn't have where to stay, now we have our own uh, facility to, uh, to host uh, our, our guests in there. Mm -hmm. okay, and um, well, I mean, this uh, MACA Research Center uh, is just probably in the eyes of everyone because we are the only ones with it. So do you actually control the fields where you get your MACA from? Yes, we, we, uh, we do, correct. Yeah. yeah, it's, uh, I mean, if we, I mean, we learned the lesson, okay, and we, we cannot own the land, okay, because there, there's a law in Peru uh, that in order to own land, you must work the land. Uh -huh. So you have to put your hands in the dirt. So you have okay. to be the actual farmer. Yeah, farmer, correct. So uh, what happened in Peru, just to explain, okay, the farmers, okay, it's not just one farmer that owns, I mean, so much acres. No, it's just many little uh, farming operations, if you want, okay, mm -hmm. grouped together in a co-op, and that's how they work. Yeah. Uh, I, I should probably mention something else as well, okay? When you grow maca root, uh, at least the ones in Peru, that's what we know, uh, once you harvest, you cannot plant in the same piece of land for at least six to eight years. Oh, so it exhausts the soil. It exhausts it, the soil it, in just one uh, harvest. So you need to go fallow for six, seven years. And you have to move around. Exactly. Yeah. And so what do you plant on it uh, when it's fallow? Uh, no, nothing. It's just uh, basically you take your... Uh, pasture? No. Yeah, correct. Pasture. Yeah. Do, do they, uh, what, what do they graze there? Sheep? Uh, yeah, sheep, uh, some llamas as well. Okay. okay. That's, that's normal. Uh, I would say probably cows, horses, donkeys. Can you have, can you have cows at that altitude? Yeah, they have them. I mean, not a lot. I mean, it's just maybe a few, but I mean, that's what you will, you will see in there if you ever go. So you really have become a true ambassador for Maca, right? And for yeah. Peru. Correct. Uh, one more thing to know. Uh, in Germany, you know, are you familiar with WADA uh, for uh, Olympics, anti-doping? Oh, yes, WADA, W-A-D-A. That is correct. So, guess what? Our Maca Pro Roger Latinized Maca Powder is the only, the first and only Maca in the world that you can actually take and it's allowed for Okay, uh, so they tested and they decided yeah. that it's allowed. No, uh, no stimulants, no, uh, no compounds that can cause, you know, uh, okay. the stimulant. There. But it does give you an advantage. <laughs> that is correct. And that's the whole point. I mean, and we did that in purpose, okay, uh, mm -hmm. because, you see, there's a lot of uh, uh, things going on uh, with the MACA products. We found uh, many companies that we supply the maca in the world. Uh, they, uh, they, these guys before us, they found corn, fava bean powder. I mean, the maca was cut it. They found sugar, excessive amounts of sugar. Uh, sugar is cheap. Well, right? yeah, and the maca on its own tastes a bit bitter. Correct, and uh, but. I'm, I was surprised when I uh, tried some maca products from, from different competitors. Okay, it was so sweet. Uh, that can't be. I mean, maca, I mean, it is sweet, but not so sweet, right? Yeah. Uh, so basically, that tells you that uh, there's not uh, an honest business going on here. Okay, mm -hmm. and, 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 and Chinese uh, maca, that's turtle. Basically, that's like uh, flour. Well, I mean, that, that's the story behind uh, Maca. Uh, I think we've done a very good job. Uh, well, our company is uh, it's not just in Canada. We are in 30 countries worldwide. Uh, we supply many, many companies with our products. So you will be surprised, for example, you know, Puka, Puka tea? Yes. Okay. So Puka tea in, in the UK uh, is now Unilever. 
Okay. okay. Yeah. But regardless, I mean, they they kept the uh, the company the same. Uh, it's an independent entity with the same standards, and uh, we supplied our maca espresso. You know, we have a maca espresso, okay, which is a coffee alternative, uh, and they blend it with the Ayurvedic uh, herbs, and they have the morning time tea or black tea uh, series. So it's just, I mean, different companies they use our raw materials. I mean, for blending, formulation, and so on. Yeah, and I mean, we we are the number one uh, in terms of quality. Uh, we've been in business for, I mean, in, in Canada for 16 years and uh, never, ever had any recall or complaint or anything on our products. So, and we, we're, we're still growing and it's a healthy business. Well, there will definitely be a limited uh, supply of the high quality product because you have only so much land and you have to rotate and, it and all that. But yeah, but we, we want to keep it that way. I think, uh, I mean, oversize the operation uh, to make it huge. Yeah. No. That's it's, not... It reminds me of the champagne uh, of the French wine <laughs> okay. or whatever, right? Like you can only grow so many cases of wine on this vineyard and that's and, that. And that's it. Yeah. Correct. So have you experienced the liquid maca yourself? Oh, yes, I have. Oh, the reason we're having this conversation is because <laughs> I liked it. Okay, that's good. Well, as many people. Otherwise, I mean, we wouldn't, we wouldn't be in business anymore. I mean, yeah. people love our products. Uh, many people know about the liquid maca, the maca pro XP. Uh, it's been around for many, many, many years. And, um, uh, I've been doing so many, uh, shows. Uh, I travel a lot. I, I, I do presentations here and there. I mean, my kids are taking over now and, uh, I'm not stepping, I mean, I'm stepping back, but I'm not retiring by the way, yeah. but I'm still, you know, behind the, uh, the wheel creating new uh, new products, new applications, uh, new formulas. Um, we have here, for example, um, this is another one in a capsule form. Yeah. Yeah. This is, uh, if, if people start asking for it, I'll be very happy to add it to the website. This one yeah. had to do with male health, right? Uh, the Maca Pro SX. Okay. Yeah. It's more or less the same idea as the, uh, as the, the liquid, as the liquid. Yes. Because what we do is just, we take the maca roots, okay? Okay, the maca roots, and yeah. we, uh, we put them in a blend of uh, aphrodisiac herbs. We have a product called uh, the Panty Breaker. I don't know if you heard about that. In, uh, no, sorry, that one I have not experienced. <laughs> okay, so, and the, you can actually Google, okay, uh, the, uh, the actual name of this product in Peru by, I mean, by the uh, Aboriginal people, they created. It's called uh, the panty breaker. How do you say that in Spanish? Uh, rompe calzón. Okay. <laughs> so it is an aphrodisiac uh, drink. Okay, prepared with uh, seven roots. Uh, so the other name that you will find is by it goes by seven roots, and we actually have that product available too. Okay. So we did something like the liquids, okay, the, like the liquid macas, okay, but we created a, our own version of the, uh, of the, um, of the panty breaker. Of the panty breaker. So, and, okay, so this is an advertisement so for people who are watching this. <laughs> you can ask us at Life Enthusiast if you want it, we'll get it for you. We know how. Know. Yes, and, uh, and, and, and why, why it works is just because now, this is just uh, again ancient knowledge. We just compile all the information, and we try to develop a industrial uh, process, okay, using all these materials. Right. Right. Okay. Obviously, an industrial, but not industrialized. Okay. Yeah. It's just uh, you know we we have. Yeah, you want consistency and uh, uniformity. Well, we have to. We are forced to. I mean, uh, it's 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 food, and actually, we have to uh, comply with uh, certain regulations. Uh, hygiene, uh, cleanliness. Uh, so all these details have to be observed when you manufacture a product. And that we have. Yes. So in, in summary, I, I would like to say, so yeah. I believe that we have here adaptogenic product that mm -hmm. is unique in the world, unlike anything else, grown in the harshest of conditions. And it, it does work. I feel happy. 
okay, because we, we help uh, many people over time. People with hormonal uh, imbalance situation, uh, different problems, uh, over stress, you name it, okay? Uh, it just uh, changed their lives right, right of the sudden. It's great. Yeah. Okay, Jorge, this is wonderful. Thank yeah. you very much. My pleasure. So we, uh, if you want to pronounce it as George Uranat, then yeah, that's George. fine. <laughs> we, yes. immig we immigrants have to start calling ourselves what the local people can pronounce. It's an honor and it's wonderful. And I thank you for sharing this with us and, and the and, world. And, uh, and any time, I mean, we can uh, do another presentation. On, I mean, maybe if you, uh, if you have uh, customers online, I mean, I'll, I'll, you're welcome to. Uh, That's great. Uh, I'm, I'm so up. happy to have you so approachable. So this is Martin Patella for Life Enthusiast. We restore vitality to you and to the planet. And here is an example of that.